Hi there, Steph. Thanks for popping by. Today's card was made with a clearly besotted stamp set called Make a Wish. Uh, you may have seen me use it before, but if you haven't, I'm sure you've seen it around. And if you want to see the other card, have a look at my videos on YouTube. Um, it's a really nice stamp set. It's two really big flowers, as you can see. <laughs> uh, they are really good to color. I found with Prismacolor as well as Copic. Um, and I really enjoyed the fact that you you get a good space to kind of blend colors and here i decided i wanted to go from emerald color um and then when i finished the petals i was thinking oh, if the petals are green how are the leaves gonna be and then i decided to go for what i would call acajou but um I, I don't think that's an english word um this kind of dark woody color um and to apply it to the leaves as well and it's kind of a, it makes me think of a kind of a japanese dark wood uh, theme um, and these flowers are not Japanese not that I know of but uh, it's kind of a mix between a Japanese and a Chinese card with the color theme emerald jade let's say jade and the dark wood uh, so that's kind of where the inspiration comes from my explanation is a bit random but that's kind of where you know that's what happened in my head kind of thing so I decided to go with a um, very dark green a medium green and then an extremely light green uh, that has a tinge of yellow in there and um, I applied the dark green first and the medium green and then I applied the very light green but only on, at the end of the petal and I once I've I kind of feathered there I wasn't looking for the perfect blending um, I was kind of feathering at first I wasn't quite sure how I was going to blend these three colors I've seen colors out there where it goes from really dark to really white and I'm always amazed how the blend is made and obviously I mean the if there is a secret, I think it's just you need to have really juicy markers. Uh, Copic will mix really well if they are juicy. So not to wait too long between each petal because you don't want it to dry. But do have really juicy markers because so, it will really help. So um, once I've applied all my green, I basically came with a zero. And then I blended, or I kind of, yeah, I blended the edges between the darker green and the lighter green. And as you can see here, the second flower was a bit too dark green, so I added some more medium green and blended that again, and I think it worked quite well. So here is for like the most unusual color leaf of the year. Um, I decided to go with a brown, which I'm not sure which color it was, but it was a dark brown, and then some sort of pinky orangey color almost peach kind of color uh, and then in between that i think it was terracotta and then i blended that together and at first i was like ooh, and after i thought ooh, and then eventually i thought ooh, <laughs> and it was quite nice in the end i think i mean i know it's weird and unusual so it'll be like marmite you like it or you hate it uh but i think in the end it works quite well because you get a really big contrast between the leaves and the flower and it kind of pops uh, but then I would understand if some people didn't like it because the color scheme is quite unusual but I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone and trying something different so here we go it's it's quite you know I think it's it's quite cool I quite like it <laughs> sorry um, so I've been going with the leaves and I go around using the same technique so I sped up things quite a lot after the first initial leaf um, just to keep you going so you don't get bored um, but if you do want to see like a slower you know some part of the coloring process a bit slower do let me know um, I do tend to get things a bit fast so that you don't get bored watching but if you do want to see something in particular please let me know um, and then I went with the shading so I used my W markers um, I do think the cool grays would have worked there they would have been a bit too cool and so there's a bit too much of the blue I mean you can see when you put, use cool gray you kind of see the blue in there um, and I don't think with the green and the brown it would have worked when the warm grays have that tinge do you say t I think the word is tinge of brown in there that I think makes it work better with the brown of the leaves and the green of the leaf the flower sorry so I think it's kind of um a good color for that I don't have the other um, gray markers uh, so I'm not sure but here I thought warm gray would work quite well and I'm actually quite pleased with the result so I do always try to kind of decide where my shading is going to be or where the light is coming from so the light is coming from the top here so you can see the shading is placed under the petal uh, which is kind of common sense in that case I tend to do that quite a lot I I mostly have the light coming from the top, um, except if I do some sort of 
um, you know, like putting a greeting in the middle of a card and then flowers all the way around. Then in that case, the light would come from the middle, so I would place the shading on the edges of the card. Um, but that's only in this kind of layout. Um, in this specific layout, I stick to um, light coming from the top. I do add a little bit of shading between the petals and a bit around the edges, but maybe not quite as dark. It's a little dark here, but not quite as dark as the one below, or, you know, the shading below. The idea that if you don't do that, it kind of looks like this. It's popping out from the bottom of the card, but not from the top, so it does look a bit weird. <laughs> so I do like doing that. And then I do like using the zero to kind of blend um, with the white of the card. You don't have to do that, but I find that it looks a little bit nicer. And then I like to try to go, I like to go over again and again, just kind of intensify. Because at first you may think, oh, it's too dark. But then once you've been all around the flower and you placed all your shading, you realize that some places actually need a little bit more shading. Uh, and sometimes I actually do something that was taught, I think, by a teacher when I was 11 or 12 at school. I'll teach her uh, to take my card and to look at it from far away to see if it looks right or not. Uh, I often find myself coloring and thinking it looks odd, and then I look at the screen of the computer to see what the video says. And I look at the video, I'm like, oh, it actually looks quite good. So sometimes, I don't know if it's a visual effect or if it's just me being tired when I color, but um, I find that looking at things from a little further away sometimes does help. So here it's a birthday card, uh, but I went quite uh, simple with a greeting and I put have a great day. I thought the flowers were quite big. Uh, so I didn't do too much. I did retrace all the outlines, obviously, with a um, pigment pen, Sacra Micron pigment pen, pen, sorry. And then I use a Spica, Copic Spica at you, uh, glittery pen, because I do like to add a little bit of glitter. It's quite subtle, uh, but I think when you see it in real, it's quite nice. And then a bit of Sacra white gel pen to put in the center of the flower. Uh, and finally, you will see, I was kind of looking at it and still thinking there's something missing. Um, and I was kind of hesitating. I placed some white onto a leaf here, and then I'm like, mm, that looks odd. <laughs> so I decided to back down and I recovered it with my Copic. Uh, and I got lucky, I managed to cover it quite well. But I placed the white under the petal and the branches and the flowers, not quite all the way around like I could have. Uh, if you placed it all the way around the flowers, then it looks like it's a die cut. I didn't quite do that there, but I still think it adds enough dimension that it was that little bit of white I was missing. You, I get the dimension and I get the contrast and I do quite like that. So then I glue my card obviously and then I trim my edges and just um, crisp, you know, press on the crest to make sure it falls properly and then I decided to add a few bits here and there. Maybe I could have skipped the last step, but I do think the flowers, I'm hoping the flowers will have the wow effect. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you find it interesting. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I see you in the next video. Bye.